cool. We're back at four and two. <clears throat> Five wins gets us very close to break even. That would be amazing. Uh, but obviously we're walking the tight right now. Blue white deck got fairly lucky last game, I think, to not only rip the Gideon, but to have our opponent kind of misplay their equipment and then uh, draw slightly worse than us after that deflection game where we were able to make the 5-5, five five, just put that pressure on them and really blow them out with um, the plus two, plus two on tap. Like they just lost both their blockers there. Uh, okay. I like this hand. We can use this to make this fly. And we have kind of like the emergency record tower. So definitely going to keep this. Two drop and a three drop. And some stuff. I don't know that you can ask much more. You know, maybe if this was another. That would be but we're on the draw. P masher. I don't even want to speculate on what the P stands for. Just going to assume it's the keyboard letter P. Is anything else? Would be Let's keep the names classy, like Business Insider. All right. So let's let's get the Labyrinth Guardian down. This at least has a chance to block this profitably. So most likely they're going to follow up. This is actually a pretty nice draw with the uh, Aven of Dirt Hope. Okay. RIP. Assuming we keep finding lands, uh, we can go Sun Mayor into Angel, get a token, and two five fives. It's just kind of, it feels like this this uh, format that I play, and it could just be the the biases of people um, drafting right now, but it certainly feels balanced around. Uh, creatures that are only two or three power and toughness, and five fives line up against them incredibly well. So we're rooting for a land drop here. Wow, three colors. So our opponent either knows something we don't, or um, got a little ambitious in the draft. Yeah, so this card doesn't really line up with the cards that, well, with their first card very well. So we can swing with both. This one will make this one fly. So that's 100% free. And we can even wrap, uh, like we have on Summit. And I think what we're going to do is plus one the Survivor. Uh, no, I mean, how, 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 what are the chances that they actually... They would have to have a boatload of cycling cards to have this one shot. Get again. I really wish they were better at graphically representing what was uh, targeted by Gideon. And I'm sure that's on their wish list. Like I'm sure they have a lot of little UI things. I noticed uh, in that last patch they did make some changes. Okay, so this is a card that we did draft very late. Did not make our deck. I feel like it's probably not a playable card. Unless you have, unless there's something I don't know about with tournaments. So, do this guy again. Make our nice attack here. And, fortunately, can't play both, but I, I actually want to use the monitor ball. This 2 3 is a little bit. Presence in the cards. So I guess they're what? Most likely blue, white, splash, and red for some removal. Hope. I respect that. 
So now would be an excellent time to rip a land. We've seen our opponent doesn't really have any room. Use the flyer. Combat. So it doesn't deal any damage. So we can actually make our same attack. Uh, yeah. I'm not interested in sandblasting yet, so I'm just going to play this Conning Survivor, which also, again, toughness blocks. All we're interested in doing is preserving Gideon. I just want to preserve Gideon until I can get this Sun Moon online. So this card's not nearly as good as I kind of hoped it would be, but we only have, I think, three or four cycling cards in the deck. And I do wonder if there's like a blue-red cycling deck that works. This card's over With things like Sandblast and the plus two, plus two combat tricks. Like Prowess is one of those mechanics that comes back to the game looking at Constructed. It feels very like, why? What's the value of this? But playing with it a little bit did. Oh, okay. Like, plus one, plus one actually really means a ton. Uh, especially the way the format seems to be balanced. The breaking point between two and three and four. I'm hopeful we can win this one. It's even just plus here. I think this Gideon's had a big enough tool now that we don't have to worry about holding back. Um, playing too close to it. Because if they chip me too damn it's fine. We're also one land away from being able to turn the last system. But yep, we get to second main phase sun here here. Really hope they're not like sandbagging some counter spell. But it's fine. Oh, that pause means okay. Nope. We're good. So now next turn we get to slam this even. Make a token. Probably run away with the game. So if we get to five wins here, oh. Then we've really gotten good value out of this draft because we got Gideon, which is a card that I was thinking crafting towards anyways, like I want to play right now with the fairies and Gideon. So we got a Gideon here, free rolled. If we get to five wins, we are virtually uh there we go. That's the red splash. Virtually even on the draft. Well the question is obviously our revelation. I think we want to wait one turn for Alpha. The reason being the Sun Mare token is going to be indestructible. So we're actually going to go no attacks. Get our token. They get their token off the God. This flies, right? Okay, yeah. We can trade Aven for Aven here. And then on our turn, we can make Gideon indestructible. Our swing for nine. And then it's our four cards plus their two. Or it's our three cards plus their two plus our five, five of them. That feels like a winning proposition to me. Jeez. This plus one is just insane for a three mana planeswalker to just be able to come down and waste something like that. So good and limited. So let's read this 100%. Other horses are indestructible. 
So I think as this resolves, we will keep the token. It'll obviously post resolution no longer be destructible because the sun is gone. But we've already tested in the first game that we know that zero Gideon hour. The Gideon stays. Really like to see them tap out for something good here. Uh, so that we just know that they don't have a counter. But that's the one thing I'm very worried about is that if they do have a counter, okay. It's a little annoying because they're going to have something to eternalize. This does not um, exile. Ditch two. Whoa! They should have done that first. <laughs> Those cunning survivors could have gotten through. All right, so now this this play becomes like absolutely insane. Like win the game insane. Oh, that's right. The locust god does go back to their hand, but they're just dead. All right. Are we a bronze drafter? We are. So we're at five wins. That's awesome. Uh, just a hundred gems under break even. The Ron Paul. I don't even want to speculate what the Ron stands for. That. All right, I like this hand. I mean, this card it doesn't excite me, but I like uh, Spellweaver to crop me. So, and Spellweaver plus Sun of Sand last hit. And our opponent's on Mulligan. Sorry, Ron Paul. You're going to have to pull yourself up by your bootstraps here. That's a very good card. Uh, so let's see. Let's just play Aerial Guide and not attack into their Double Striker. Nice rare. They're going to swing. They're not going to have a block because of the aerial guide, so they're going to swing. Oh my gosh, the bombs! Holy moly! Crazy bombs. So the question is, yeah, I think we just play both of these because they block the pouncer. And eventually they're going to do something with this. They can't just spend three in a reserve, like, not add to the So eventually we're going to have an opportunity to sandblast that out. I'm I'm going to imagine that they're just going to to go guide here. Oh, they're actually going to block. Wow. So how's this work? All right. So I think this is free. They can blink something out of combat here to 
prevent damage. So that that's about so I think the way the second we'll see. It might still it, it doesn't I they can get something out of it. Okay. Back on tap. That thanks to you. So we just got rid of one of their for sure best bombs. Oh, but they found their second bubble. I find it hard to believe that aggressively using Sandblast is a key to this format. I just think that it's best of one. The decks overall are janky. This person has for sure the best decks I've ever seen. Like, this card too, like they just have, have had nuts card after nuts card. Um, all right, let's get into three. And make our crop mate. Get us back our spell worker. Loving that card. And let's, we're going to resist the urge to cycle because I do think they'll have more, given how low. Like they, they probably have answers to some of the stuff. And the four four one we get against them. That's the logger coming back up. All right, neither are zombies. The of course itself. So I we're, I think we're definitely going to exert this and probably apply it. Combat attacks. That's sick. Look at the value. That's so sick. That's right. Oh, I don't like that. I still get my friend back. Uh, I guess we're going to hold Sandblast here because we're really going to hope to rip a land and just slam it this next turn. So I want to keep them from or doing that. This we're probably never going to kill because I don't care with it. This converted mana cost two less, so we're not bringing our bird back. Let's, is this a death touch? Well, let's see why they would do this. And if they use a trick, we have Sandblast in response. But this looks like they might have just not thought about, the, have not thought about these cards since I cast them, because it's done nothing. It, it has that feeling, that whiff of like, oh right, this is uh, not hard to double block in this game. Right. You just give up your creature. That's too bad. Come on, Ron Paul. There's no handouts coming for you. There's no redistribution. Once you lose something, it's gone. Oh, not not a land, but a great card. Yeah. No reason not to just drop a 5-5 five five here. At this point, we might be looking to cycle the same first. If we draw another cycling card. Oh no! They had an answer. Alright, but they're empty handed, so they're not going to have an answer to the answer. If we ever draw the land. Alright, like I said, we're never blocking. But we can totally do this because we have devoted crop to get stuff back. And we can even do that. 
this. Is it possible to have a trick here? Uh, if they have a sandblast, they have a sandblast just to get better. But I think they're just going to try to gain a little bit. Yep. Death touch. Get them both. Lifelink. Unless they have a play here. Uh, they must have a play, so they don't want a lifelink. Oh, okay, good. For a second, I thought they assigned the damage. Oh, it's, an, it's a play. Uh, is it worth? It is. If they block, they spend. So they have to choose between uh Cool. So we have a free world on this and gotten a Gideon in the process. And let's, since we know this one will be the last one, uh, one way or another, let's push our luck on the crashing for the sake of finishing the video series. And then moving on to the next with our winnings. So what have we learned? Um, that Ron Paul, despite his politics, some assistance there. Uh, that Gideon has a pretty good win rate when you cast it. So we can cast it. Hunting Survivor is not amazing. Active Heroism is, is good, but probably not as bad. Uh, that 2 1 prowess and the life loss mechanic seems very powerful. Good. It's good. Wrath is good. So play to your bombs. I think we got that Wrath second pack. Denise. Flyers are good. The 2-2 flyer for three that picks something up lets you push through damage. Format that feels like um, the board clogs up very easily. Ooh. Right. I kind of wanted Cyclops. Let's uh, see so what I That card is such a way to win. So let's not cycle. The Gideon will be good on. That card I don't want to cycle. Play our Oh, wow. Okay. All right, let's cycle. Hope to hit white. We had a stand blast. I can pay this, which is sick. We're going to be able to turn this this way. So, this removal seems pretty meaningful. Ball, turn wise, like really going to stand last thing. Might.
Yeah, if I act, if I can double block. Gideon plus the circle. And sack this at the turn. We have options. Flyer, we can happy. Let's play this. It starts being then I guess we This they can't use it. What's the safest? The safest to block. Maybe they're just doing this. They, I'm assuming they have a bump spot. Side of this. Oh, what? Is that bug out? Oh, did they use the camel to fight? Yeah. That seems to be most likely. That camel is not in the state to fight. It's plus spike. X proof is at five, six, seven. Let's play our spell weaver. Plus and we're gonna. I guess we're going to have to gang block. Back to arrow with some cards. think of the best way to do this. Just that. So four, five, six, seven. We have count. And still alive. They had swung out there. I'm not sure. What they done. I think we have a cycle. So 
make them sandblast or something. Sit back and I guess we're just waiting until we draw into our path. Yeah, waiting until. This is just not a good block to cut. So I think we can do this. Give and take. Two, two. Angel of So they have much like stone up there. They're sitting on this. They have to assume some of this. They're spending their life. <laughs> Untapping desert, tapping desert, giving up. It's like the saddest thing I've ever seen. Fortunately, cannot really attack. We are just trying to. I wish Gideon had like did something. We're just gonna keep matching the creature to creature here, plus and getting. And just try to grind out this. If they, but I don't. I think, considering that I would assume my opponent is probably five or six match for cards that way, I assume that despite the shitty cards we see in the deck, they must have something decent in here. That's good. So they have more. That's really bad. So we're going to have to throw a Labyrinth Guardian in front of one of these Sidewinders and just bring it back next turn. I guess it's fun. Oh, they didn't attack. All right, well, we can start chipping now with active heroism. It's going to be obvious to them that we are, that we have something that all of a sudden we started attacking Faven, but. Okay. This attack is, I guess, a little meaningless because they are gaining to a turn off this. But they can easily read me for active heroism, sandblast here, or there's another white um, deal damage attack creature type spell. All right, so who all is getting? 
Whose part? So right away, we reveal our trap card. And I think we just make the best blocks we can. Get rid of the scariest. Oh, wait, this is going to block two things. Uh, maybe that means this. No, I guess we just do it like that. Gideon takes some damage. Oh, no trick. Okay. Sick. We got rid of their two threatened creatures. Uh, we get to play two spells here. Which means we can keep mumbling. I gotta make this enter there so I don't have to click through and do activations. So Sunmare seems good, Wrath seems good. Anything that's going to help me break through this mind state, both top deck and garbage. Oh, Sandblast? They draw it. They're just doing this now. Sure. Are they trying to make me feel like this is pointless? It's it's working. At a certain point, oh, Gideon Rumbling doesn't really do anything because they have these two fives to block it. We're pretty much in on drawing more flying, Sun Mare, or Wrath. And if we draw Wrath, we need to really hold it until we need it because the way this game is going, the board is not worth Wrath, even though we're only chipping. Nice, they mistap there. Get wrecked. Did I cycle my bounce spell? The game start to put together. Ten, twelve, so we only have five lands. <sighs> They have five, they have seven spells on the deck. I wonder if we need to make some plays of like smoke and sandblast and somebody. I kind of like that. Because I'm getting a little tired <laughs> of this game. This could be a punt. But let's just effing sandblast things. things. Well, let's just sandblast them. 
Yes, it's fine. I guess we should be a little disappointed here. Save this. They just don't have a swing back, so that, that attack is not. No one can race the life game in my desert steam deck. It says H. I don't even want to speculate what H stands for. Oh, brother. Probably should have seen that coming. 11 to 10. So unfortunately, the cards we have left. No, we do have one card. Left. Uh, the card that will help us get a lot of our two drops back. I'm hoping they attack. And we don't. three lands. Each. I think I have another way to gain life. Sun. I will lose first to decking. Unless they do something with the cards. Oh, it's really going to go to play, I guess. How would they end up with so many cards there too? Were they just like waiting and coming back? Like we could we didn't even have that option, right? Because we just land just sandblast. So if they've been holding all this shit, good on them. Alright, now seems as good a time as any. If only this were Hearthstone. Well, in Hearthstone of course they were too. Oh wow. Okay, they have it. They have it. This is the card I was waiting for. GG. It uh, looks like six wins. I think we should be fairly happy with that because I wasn't didn't think this deck was that amazing. Who knew that these two fives. All right, we actually have a, a path. Do we have any blue cards left? Trying to think of what blue cards are left in the deck. Because, like, any blue cards help us here. What the heck? This guy's got so many rares. Alright. We tried. I think if we had just drawn anything a little better here, there, if Sunmare and Wrath were the bottom seven cards, that would have been great. But let's see what our prizes are. So before, I think this graphic is, is messed up, because before it showed you the game with three, so let's actually see. Go to packs. Oh, just the one. Alright. So plus 100 gold, plus a pack, plus the, uh, let's see. That card's terrible. A 
little bit of alt progress. All right. So, you know, plus 100 gold. We got the Planeswalker. Not bad. I wish we had gotten packs. But still a good experience. And let's jump into the next.